All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Daphna Adler and I'm one of the counselors here at Los Altos High School. And I'm really happy to introduce our presenters today for our session on studying in Northern Ireland. And this is part of International University Month, which is running throughout the month of October. Uh, so for students who are not familiar with this, it's a webinar series all about studying internationally. Um, we had an intro at the beginning of the month, and then we've had a series of different sessions on different countries and regions, um, different topics like student life. We're going to have one about employability next week and an affordability one as well. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to learn all about um, how one can study internationally. Um, and some students are already a little bit familiar. And for some students, it's a whole brand new topic and there's something for everyone. Um, and so today we're focused on Northern Ireland and I'm going to introduce Peter Brimstone from uh, Queen's University in Belfast and Johnny Hill from Ulster University also in Belfast. And I'm gonna turn it over to them and they're gonna share a lot of information beginning with a really beautiful video. So you can see a little bit of what Northern Ireland looks like. So thank you both for being with us. Thank you very much. Um, yes, welcome everybody. Thanks for tuning in to hear a little bit more about Northern Ireland. My name is Peter Brimstone. I work for Queen's University Belfast and I'm joined today by himself. Uh, Johnny, do you want to say hello and then we'll get going? Yeah. Hi everybody. Yeah, so as Peter mentioned and Daphne mentioned, I'm Johnny and I work for Ulster University, uh, as Daphne mentioned, in Belfast and across Northern Ireland. But we'll come into that in further detail later. Perfect. Uh, so just to get us started, I'm just going to play a little video um, and then we'll get going with our presentation. When you get on the trails, you can read about them, but you don't know what to expect. You can take a photo of it, but you can't explain to people what you're actually seeing without them seeing it too. By the time you get to the end of the hike, you know, it, it looks like you're in a fairy tale. It's just, it's hard to put in towards the experience that you'll, you'll have coming here. It's just, it's kind of a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> Three words I would use to describe Northern Ireland would definitely be breathtaking, mystical, adventurous. Some of my favorite things about traveling is one, the butterflies that you get in your stomach. The exposure to meeting new cultures, new faces, <laughs> new people. The people of Northern Ireland, I would definitely say they're very giving. It really feels like you're welcomed into the culture, you know, you don't feel like an outcast. People want to know the real you. The longer you're here, the more you just kind of get used to the rain, you embrace it. You can tell that there's age and tradition. Every little nook and cranny is, you know, more interesting than the last. Stepping off the plane at George Best Airport, it was kind of awe-inspiring. Just seeing everything in, in real life. everything that I thought it would be and more. Um, I've experienced so much in my time here and got to meet so many people and changed a lot, so I love it. It's gonna make me cry. I'm sorry. Uh, 
That makes me cry, cry a little too. <laughs> there we go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that video. I, I know I certainly did. Um, so yeah, welcome to our Studying in Northern Ireland presentation. That video there just, uh, I think it just touched on some of the real uniqueness about Northern Ireland. And we're just gonna delve a little bit deeper into that and what the country has to offer you as a student and what the two universities, Queen's University and Ulster University have to offer you. So where is Northern Ireland? So we are located in the Northeast of the island of Ireland. So geographically Irish, politically, economically, we are part of the UK. So it's a UK degree, UK education, globally recognized and very transferable. You get a British university experience, but you're mixed into a, a, a real immersive kind of experience of Irish and British culture. You're about two hours away from Dublin, about an hour by plane to London, maybe half an hour to Manchester. So nothing's too far on, in the UK and Ireland. Belfast is the capital city where we both have campuses and Belfast and Causeway Coast were recently voted the number one place to visit in the world, uh, which you'd seen in the video uh, just earlier. So I'm going to hand over to Peter, who's going to give you a little bit more insight into Northern Ireland before we move into university information. Thanks very much, Tony. Um, yes, for such a small place, uh, Northern Ireland has had quite an impact on the world, uh, and particularly in the United States. Or so our links go go back further, probably than the, than the foundation of both our countries. Um, of your forty-five U.S. presidents, no less than twenty have their family roots in NI. So for a tiny little place, we produced a lot of significant figures uh, in U.S. history. Um, part of the revolutionary history, of course, comes back to Northern Ireland. We've always been politically active, but actually. Three signatories and Declaration of Independence were from here. Um, and if you're fans of, of Hamilton, um, Hercules Mulligan, that uh, man on the inside, uh, was born in Korean, where one of also university campuses are. So tiny little place, but a huge impact out in the world. That continues to today. Um, there are over 200 US companies that have regional headquarters, European headquarters, based in Northern Ireland. Um, so... The world has come to us on our doorstep and those links to the US remain. Um, similarly, the US is actually our, our second largest export market. The first one, of course, being the Republic of Ireland, which we are attached to. Um, but behind that, a lot of trade still going backwards and forwards. And from a student perspective, what this means is when you come over in terms of employability, uh, there's a lot right on your doorstep that should be familiar to you. In terms of, of where we are, obviously, Johnny talked you through our, our position within the UK and on the island of Ireland, but Belfast is a wonderfully well-connected place. Um, there are two airports in Belfast itself, um, the capital city, and of course, Dublin, the capital of the Republic of Ireland, is just 90 minutes away by car uh, to our south. You can fly to the US East Coast in about seven hours. It is about 10 or 11 hours all the way over to the West Coast, um, but with major international airports within easy reach. Similarly, a lot of our students take the opportunity to travel while they are here. Belfast is wonderfully connected to the rest of Europe. So you can be in any European city really within about two or three hours uh, if you like to travel and get around. We are the gateway to Europe. The city of Belfast itself, it's not a huge city, but it is a small, vibrant European capital. So a population of about 300,000 people. Um, which makes it the type of city there's a lot going on, but also it's the type of city you can walk around in. You can walk everywhere, you can walk from class uh, to the city centre, to the shops and the restaurants, um, and you can also walk to your accommodation. So it's really easy to get around. Um, it is the most affordable student city in the UK. So you're looking at a cost of living that's about 60% lower uh, than somewhere like London or Dublin. Um, so you, your money goes a lot further. You can have a, a really good quality of life for not very much cost. Uh, it is also the safest city in the UK. Uh, crime is very low. Uh, you can genuinely walk around at night. It feels pretty safe. Uh, it's a good place to be. It's a great place to be a student. Around half of the population in the city of Belfast is actually under the age of 30. And that sort of dictates all of the life that goes on in the city. Um, so it is very much a young people's city. And that is reflected in, in the makeup, um, both physically and, I guess, socially. Uh, how that is reflected uh, in the geography of the city is that it's split into what we, well, what we call quarters, it is split into quarters. Um, and some of these will be recognizable, but these represent sort of the, the culture of the city itself. Uh, one, of course, is the Titanic Quarter. One of the things we're, we're most famous for is building 
building a boat that sank on its first journey, but we don't offer uh, we don't offer naval engineering, so you don't need to worry too much about that. Um, but the Titanic quarter now, in its current terms, as well as housing the fantastic Titanic Museum, uh, the world's number one tourist attraction, um, it is home now to film studios and our shipyards tech and cyber security. So the traditional industrial hub of the city is now the new industrial hub and leading the way with our, with our major growth industries in Northern Ireland. The second of our quarters is the Linden Quarter, and this is probably where you'll spend a lot of time. Uh, Belfast is known as a festival city. We have festivals throughout the year um, for things like film festivals, music festivals, but festivals and ideas and politics, uh, Belfast Pride, and a huge range of others. So there's an entire district of the city that is very much focused on that culture. So that will be, as well as our theatres, our independent cinemas, it's open air markets, it's shopping, uh, and the food in Belfast, despite what you hear about UK food, is actually fantastic, uh, including a number of Michelin starred restaurants. But again, that cost of living thing comes in cheap. You can probably go out and eat in a restaurant in Belfast for about 15 or $20 a, a person, which is just fantastic. The third of the quarters, um, quite selfishly from my point of view, is the Queen's Quarter. So that is where my university uh, is located, and this is in the south of the city, uh, and it's home to around 25,000 students at Queen's. And it is, the university has grown with the city and the city has grown around the university. So around there, it's, it's little cafes, bars, bookshops, all that sort of thing that you might imagine. But it is very much a part of the city where you feel part of the community as a student. You feel part of the wider, wider city, the wider countryside um, as well. And then I'll hand back to Johnny to talk through the last of the quarters. Brilliant, thank you. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an insight into the Cathedral Quarter, which is the opposite side um, to Queen's Quarter, and that is where our Belfast campus is located. So it's called the Cathedral Quarter because it's home to St Anne's uh, Cathedral, which was built in 1895, so it's quite old. But also within that area, it was an old warehouse, it was an industry kind of focused area, so it has some of the oldest buildings in Belfast and Northern Ireland. It's home to around 50 cultural organizations, galleries, community of wealth and art and theatres. Um, so if you're into your different arts, street art perhaps, or even if you're into the creative side, we have what's called the Mac Theatre, which is right next door to our Belfast campus. Um, it has some real interesting places, such as the Merchant Hotel, which is a world famous hotel, and it used to boast one of the most expensive cocktails in the world. Uh, which cost about 1,400 US dollars. And that was a Mai Tai because it had a very special and uh, limited availability type of rum. Uh, so it's quite famous for its cost on that one. But as Peter mentioned before, it's relatively affordable in that area. It's a real lively, up and coming, kind of trendy part of the town um, where a lot of students would like to go out for meals, drinks, and socialize in the evenings. So then just moving on, um, just going to touch a little bit on the universities. So we're going to go, we're going to delve a bit further into more detail about each institution. But with the two universities here for Peter and I, so Peter from Queen's University, as you can see there, it's one of the oldest universities in the UK. Um, we have similar size uh, student populations. However, Queen's is at one campus and Ulster is split across four campuses. Belfast and Jonestown are about eight miles apart and Coleraine and McGee up in the north of the country. And both, yeah, have quite old heritage uh, back in the 1800s. So some beautiful and old fashioned uh, looking buildings as you can see in the picture and, and in my background. So just moving on then, um, just to give you a bit of a comparison between the UK and the US education system. So why, why should you consider the UK for your degree and your higher ed? Well, there's a number of reasons why. One, the cultural aspects and things I've just mentioned before in the presentation, but also uh, things to consider such as uh, our degrees are quite specific. So you, if you want to be a lawyer, you're going to study law. You might be able to do, say, a combined program where you do law with criminology. Our degrees are typically three years in duration and accessible direct from high school. However, some degrees may be four years in duration because they may have a year's industry placement where you work for an organization in the UK uh, and often a paid position too. We're, all students have access to our programs, so it's not restricted like some programs may be as listed there in the honest track. Uh, admissions uh, policy is very transparent. We have to be clear what we accept. However, each course can vary on its entry criteria depending on, depending on its specific nature. For example, some of the STEM courses may require for you to have specific science-based subjects, for example. 
Typically, students don't change majors. So I appreciate in the US, you have a little bit more flexibility where you can pick and choose within your first, second year. Uh, for us, you really need to know when you're applying for your degree, what you want to apply for and what you want to study. So my advice to you is think about your career. What do you want to do in the future? Work your way back. Well, how do I get into that? What degree do I need to uh, study to get there? So for example, if you want to be a computer engineer, you're going to do computer engineering. So yeah, very specific. Do your research and have a chat with people like Peter and myself to find out more about us. Okay, so yeah, what to expect about Northern Ireland? So as we mentioned before, no general education. It is very uh, specific on the subject. You're going to get a real deep, thorough and a real intense learning of a very specific subject. You're going to start that from day one. So from September through to April, uh, some courses may run through the summer as well, depending on the placements that are required as well. Uh, direct entry into professional programs, so medicine, dentistry, law, veterinary sciences, uh, those professional subjects. I mentioned before about transparency. We'll tell you exactly what you need in your offer letter to access our programs. And two little pieces here that are quite important, mostly for mums and dads, but it is one of the most affordable places to be a student, uh, particularly compared to some of your, the US institutions. So tuition fees are generally lower. And Belfast, uh, especially, has one of the lowest costs of living in the UK, especially for a student. So on the next slide, then, just to go back to the degree structure. So generally, you'll do three modules, their so classes per semester. So your degree is made up of 180 credits. So you'll do six modules, so 20 credits each. You could roughly compare 20 credits to about five uh, US credits at degree level. There is a wide range of, as listed there, co-op programs. So that's what we would call placement years, where you do a year working within the industry. However, you could consider also doing a semester abroad. So you could potentially go to say France or Italy, um, China or Fiji. Um, we really want you to get a global experience because it's gonna significantly increase your employability opportunities. So the application process, uh, UCAS, fortunately next year, the deadline has been extended and that's January the 26th. So make sure you get your application started sooner rather than later. You can apply to five institutions through one application and through one fee, and it's around 26 pounds uh, for your five applications. Decisions take a matter of weeks, depending on when you apply. If you apply sooner, you're likely to get a quicker response rather than waiting until that deadline when a lot of people will submit their applications. And you're not required to have all your qualifications and documentation in hand when you apply. So you can submit your application, and continue your education and submit those qualifications further down the line. So, okay. So then just moving on, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna hand over to Peter now to take you a bit further into the Northern Ireland experience. Thanks very much, Johnny. So yes, as Johnny mentioned, the Northern Ireland sits on the UK education system. So structurally, it's the same as you would find in sort of England, Wales, and, and similarities with the system in Scotland. But Northern Ireland as a study destination itself is actually quite unique uh, within the UK. Uh, there's a rich political history in this part of the world, um, and that makes Northern Ireland genuinely a world leading destination for some subject areas. Things like international relations, civil rights law, post-conflict governance, criminal justice reform, a lot of topics that are really hot topics, uh, particularly in the United States at the minute. There is genuinely nowhere better in the world to come study these things. Uh, Northern Ireland is a country that has had difficulties in the past and come through them and now provides fantastic experience, not just for academics, but for students to come and learn from the people around them and really learn from communities that have been through those processes and really maybe come out the other side of some things that are going on uh, politically in the US at the minute. It is an immersive, an immersive authentic environment uh, for US students. Uh, you will not just come and spend your time on a campus and spend your time in the classroom and talk to academics. You will get out and about, you will meet real people, you'll be out in the communities. Uh, we very much encourage students to go out and engage the local community. So it is truly an immersive experience. As you said, it is also the UK's safest region. So not only will you come and have this fantastic academic experience, you'll have a fantastic social experience as well. You actually get out and get to meet people from other countries um, in a fantastically diverse city. And as you said, it is a young forward looking population. So if you're thinking of maybe working when you're here, maybe staying back to work, the opportunities for employment are fantastic. The economy is absolutely booming in Northern Ireland at the minute, uh, and particularly in a lot of industries around things like technology and finance.
Leading on from that, just to give you a flavour of some of the industry that is really uh, on the rise at the minute, as I've said, fintech investments, finance and technology um, is huge in, in Belfast at the minute. We're the fastest growing digital city in the UK and the seventh fastest in the world. Um, so graduates from both Queens and Ulster are coming out and walking into jobs uh, with major international firms, big US firms like Ball State, City, Liberty Mutual, PwC, uh, you name it all of those headquarters in Belfast, as I mentioned earlier. We are also world leaders in artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. So the UK government's cybersecurity hub uh, is based at CSIT, um, which is actually just to the right of, of that photograph um, in our harbour area. Outside of, of technology, um, the film and TV industries are having a wonderful time here, and I'm sure you're all familiar with Game of Thrones. The vast majority of that was filmed in Northern Ireland. Basically, any bit where it's raining uh, or cold, that was probably filmed in Northern Ireland. The sunny bits, I think, were down in Croatia somewhere. Um, we've also hosted big productions from Disney recently, Star Wars, Armas Foil, uh, and a few others. Um, so the film industry, the creative arts, um, that sector is fantastic for students looking to get practical experience. Uh, and as well as that, engineering, pharmaceuticals, um, and... The post-Brexit trade hub with the European Union, given our special status, if anybody is interested in politics. Um, I will now just talk a little bit about Queen's to start to bring this to life. Um, as Johnny mentioned, we are the ninth oldest university in the United Kingdom. So we were founded in 1845. We had our 175th birthday party last year. It was on Zoom, like everybody's birthday, um, but we tried to have a good time anyway. We're part of the UK's Russell Group, which means we are a research intensive university. So our academics are actively involved in creating new knowledge in the areas that they teach. So when I mentioned some of those industrial sectors, the likes of pharmaceuticals, the cybersecurity hubs, uh, many of those are actually staffed by Queen's academics um, because they're out working uh, in the areas that they teach. We have 25,000 students on campus. About 3,500 of those are international students. And of that, about 200 are from the United States uh, across a huge range of programs and that's a graduate and undergraduate level. We do have world leading programs uh, in a range of areas. Most Queen subject areas are ranked in the top 200 in the world but things we do particularly well are the likes of international relations, politics, STEM and arts and literature. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about cost of attendance and scholarships just in a little second. So I, I know when you're, you're thinking about the UK, thinking about maybe Northern Ireland, uh, getting that sort of degree, getting that major choice in your head can be a tricky one. Um, please don't feel limited by that. You don't have to have done something at school that you intend to do at university. We have 221 different undergraduate programs at Queen's, so there's a huge range of options. Um, some popular ones are things like marine biology because of our access to coastal marine environments off the coast of Ireland, um, but other things like psychology, international relations, we've mentioned uh, PPE, which is a popular subject, it's politics, philosophy and economics. At Queen's, though, we do, of course, recognise that the three-year structure can maybe feel a little bit daunting, a little bit scary, and we've recently introduced a, a fantastic new option through our M Liberal Arts Programme. Um, and this is actually a four-year liberal arts programme that is modelled on the US system. So what this allows students to do is actually choose the pathway as they go along. So you don't need to declare a major when you apply. Um, you can pick and choose from different areas across arts, humanities uh, and social sciences and sort of shape your degree as you go along. So it's much more similar to a US model. So if you're thinking, I kind of know this sounds good, but I'm not sure in a major, that is possibly worth looking at. The beauty of that programme, it is a four year programme, but actually you graduate with both a bachelor's and a master's degree uh, after those four years. If you are looking for a four year model, but not liberal arts, we do also have the option for one year study abroad or work placements, what you might call a co-op year. Um, so you could come and take three years marine biology, but take a year out to go and study somewhere else, uh, like Johnny mentioned. In terms of entry requirements uh, at Queen's, of course, we are aware of the fact that there's been some disruption in the past couple of years, and we will take that into account. But typically we look for a combination approach. So a combination of three from either AP tests, an SAT or an ACT test, or honours and dual enrollment classes for various grades. If you have a particular major in mind, please just reach out. I'm happy to give you the exact grade, the exact things you would need to get into each. But typically you're looking for, for three from that list. As with other UK universities, we do also ask for a personal statement and letter of recommendations through UCAS. 
And if you're taking any specialist majors, they do require a specific subject. So if you want to do chemistry, you're probably going to have to take an AP in chemistry, for example. Um, within the arts and humanities, there's less need for that. Finally, then, just on fees and scholarships, to give you an idea, ballpark figure, what you might expect to pay to come to Queen's, our headline tuition fees are in around 18 to 20,000 pounds per year uh, for every programme. On top of that, housing runs to about 5,000 pounds a year for the total cost of attendance of between 20 and 30,000 pounds per year. And of course, on a three year programme, that will save you a bit anyway. Please know that you're very unlikely, in fact, you won't be paying uh, that full price because there are scholarships in place and currently there's guaranteed minimum of two and a half thousand pounds per year for US students. We probably should have clarified it is definitely pounds sterling like the rest of the UK and not euros like the South of Ireland. Uh, we do have a range of other scholarships as well for US students. The Future Leaders Award uh, is worth five thousand pounds off your first year tuition fees and we have a range of other awards based uh, on your academic grades um, or details are on the website for the rest of them. We are also FAFSA accredited you need to use federal aid, uh, if you'd like to use federal aid um, to support the cost of your studies, you can do that at Queen's. But that is us in a nutshell. Please do jump on the website or on our social media channels if you want to know more. Or, of course, get in touch with me and I will hand you to Johnny to talk through Ulster. Brilliant. Thank you, Peter. Um, yeah, so folks, I'm just going to give you a bit of an insight into Ulster University um, before we come to an end of this session. So. Ulster University is a multi-campus institution. We've shown you a few maps so far, but I just wanted to clarify exactly whereabouts we are on the island of Ireland. So you can see the darker blue is Northern Ireland and our four campuses have a little pink ring just on the map. So we have Belfast and Jonestown, approximately eight miles away from each other. Uh, the Coal Rain Campus up in the north of the country, which is uh, one of the most beautiful areas in the country and has some of our, specialist, our STEM specialist subjects, such as pharmacy and optometry. And then the smallest campus, which is the picture behind me, is the McGee campus, which is one of the oldest uh, campuses of the university. So on the next slide, then, I'm just going to give you a bit more information about the university. So we were established in 1849 as Belfast School of Art, and then the Belfast campus, uh, the McGee campus even, was built uh, just a few years later with the original building, the traditional original building, still standing and still fully operational. Um, and then we came, became the University of Ulster in 1968 and then rebranded as Ulster University most recently. And uh, now we're a collective group of four institutions under the Ulster umbrella. So we're a university that can offer you uh, different campuses experiences depending on what you're wanting. So if you want the kind of vibrant bustling city, we have the Belfast campus. If, you're in, if you want to have a more smaller campus um, communal kind of university lifestyle, then the Coleraine campus might be the one for you. However, the campuses are dictated by the courses. We have four faculties. We have the Arts, Humanities, Social Sciences, Computing, Engineering and Built Environment, Life and Health Sciences, and the Ulster Business School. And um, some of the most popular subjects our students go into are within business subjects, within politics, social sciences. Law is increasingly popular. However, we're also a very popular university for art subjects. So a lot of students go into things like animation, screen production, as Peter mentioned before, with the studios and some of the films being produced. One of, the, uh, one of the studios in Belfast is having a significant expansion in the next two years. So as Peter mentioned, employment opportunities are rife in the city and in Northern Ireland, and students will uh, be able to get work experience and then go into uh, careers straight away. You can see just uh, on the slide there that I've mentioned that we have a 94% graduate on time and we have a 96% of our students are in employment or further study within six months of graduating. So that just demonstrates the kind of support and the, the teaching structure and the way that we deliver our degrees sees a very strong success rate and sees you uh, beginning your career with immediate effect. The most recent development is the Belfast campus where we've invested 250 million into a brand new campus and that'll be fully functional from January next year where the campus will expand from around 800 students to about 13,000 students in uh, two buildings. So it's a very large building. Okay, so just a few uh, key facts about the university. Um, we guarantee on-campus accommodation. So we have, we, have, we, have, we focus on independent st uh, student lifestyle. So there's an independent focus on studying and teaching. So although you're gonna have lab time, lectures and seminars, you have to do a lot of independent learning and research and that independent lifestyle is continued in the student experience. 
So you live, you have your own bedroom, your own private room. There's none of the shared room uh, that you may find in the US. Um, but you have around seven or eight apartments in a uh, bedrooms in an apartment, and you have a communal lounge kitchen area where you can make your own meals. So we don't typically do meal plans at the university. However, there are cafes, restaurants, and such on the campuses and in the cities. We put a lot of emphasis into the student experience. And one of the big things that we try to encourage all our students to get involved in is the uh, sports clubs and societies. So if you play any sports, you are more than welcome to join. If you are a competitive level, then we do have some very competitive uh, sports, such as uh, the GAA, soccer, rugby, and field hockey. We, uh, we often have teams come over so from the likes of the US and compete against us in uh, sports such as field hockey. The societies, the club societies is one, perhaps if you're not into sports, but maybe you have an interest in say, esports or gaming or uh, cinemas and such, then you can join these different societies. It's a great way of making friends and meeting other students with similar interests. And I can't emphasize that enough because we want you to be happy and enjoying your time as well as being successful in your studies. We mentioned before about studying abroad. We're very close to the rest of Europe. Nothing is too far uh, in Europe, so you can get around fairly quickly. You can go to the likes of Italy or Spain and go for a semester or potentially a year. We have 2,000 paid work placements. So you'll do a, if you want to do a placement, we do what's called a sandwich degree. So you do two years studying, one year working in the industry, then you get a diploma in professional, pro, professional practice from that industry placement, and then you finish your final year so you graduated in four years. So you've been overseas, you've got your degree, you've got years work experience, and you've got the boasting rights that you studied in Northern Ireland as well to your friends. Um, and then finally, the Career Centre uh, provides you with uh, support beyond graduation to ensure that your career gets a, you know, the boost that it needs. So uh, just about the entry criteria then. So we have, um, we have a varied entry criteria depending on the course that you're applying for. But generally we're looking for at least an 1100 in the SATs or 26 for the ACTs. However, some courses such as say pharmacy or optometry, we are looking for uh, more specific uh, criteria. So two science-based subject tests, whether it be AP or SAT tests, um, and also a general high school diploma of 3.0. You'll also need to write a personal statement and that is required as part of UCAS application for all universities that you apply to. It's a 4,000 character essay. So it's only this much text. Um, but well, that's a real opportunity to sell yourself and uh, can make a difference between getting a place on a course or not. Additionally, you need to pro provide a reference as well. Um, somebody that is from your school, whether it be somebody like Daphne or a professor or something. So just on the cost then, I don't think I've got the slide in there, but um, Ulster's tuition fee is around 21,000 US dollars. And we have a guaranteed scholarship of 2,000 pounds, about two and a half thousand dollars. So it brings your fees down to about uh, 19,000 US dollars. We're able to administer financial aid should you wish to avail of that, such as FAFSA, Sally May, and the Veterans Affair GI Bill funding. And uh, accommodation ranges from about 95 to 130 pound a week. So it's approximately about six and a half thousand US dollars for the year. That's all bills are included. So that's all still in a nutshell. Um, and that concludes our presentation. So if you'd like to find out uh, a little more about the universities, have a one-on-one -on -one chat, feel free to contact Peter or myself. You can see our emails uh, in there. So Peter's there, North America QUB, and mine is j.hill at Ulster. Uh, feel free to reach out and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Super, thank you both so much. Um, I want to mention a couple things to wrap up. As far as references go, like you just mentioned, Johnny, um, so an American counselor recommendation is more of like a global view of a student, which touches on academics, but also activities and um, background and character and stuff like that. And um, I've been telling students it is generally best for a UK, uh, for a UCAS reference to ask a teacher because the universities prefer that academic perspective. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong on that for for Northern Ireland, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that essentially is the system. The, the only thing I would add to that is there, there is also the approach where a counselor could write a reference but use excerpt from teachers. So if a student sure. is applying for, for, say, a subject that, that isn't taught at their school, they could mm -hmm. ask some of their subject teachers to provide a little brief. But you are right, it is to talk to their strengths as a student. So it's their strengths in the classroom rather than all the extracurricular stuff. But there'd be no harm, for example, Miss Adler, and you writing a reference but saying, you know, 
the student's chemistry teacher said this and the student's biology sure. teacher said that. So that is an option as well. But but yes, it is their strengths as a student. Sure. That we're Great. Great. Okay. So for students, if you have questions about it or you're not sure who to ask, like just come to your counselor and, and you know, we can have a conversation with you about who would be, who would make the most sense because your counselor is happy to do it. We want to help you to the best of our ability and we don't see students in the classroom. So that's why I'm saying it's generally better to ask a teacher, but yeah, if it makes sense to kind of um, collect perspectives, um, we could certainly like talk about how that might work. Um, secondly, um, I, I say this at the end of every session because I really want to make sure students are, are understanding this. When you apply internationally, it's such a personalized process. Um, as you can see here, we've got two universities represented that are outstanding and two humans right you know, right here like talking about it and, and here to answer questions. Um, and that holds true really wherever you're applying internationally. Um, there's always an admission representative that works with international applicants. There's always support on the ground once you're there for international students. Um, and they really want you to feel comfortable with this process. They want students and parents to understand like what it is that you're walking into when you get off that plane, right? Um, and to understand as much as you possibly can ahead of time because they understand like you're literally going halfway across the world most of the time and they don't want you to be confused or not understand what you've signed up for. So really do reach out to them. Um, you, hopefully you've captured their um, uh, contact info here. And if not, just reach out to me. I will be happy to connect you with them um, and, and with any of our reps from this whole series. They are really more than happy to help you um, figure out this process and learn about their universities and their countries. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, it's just like, you know, we just heard all this incredible information about the opportunities that are open to you when you study internationally. So I really hope our students are going to consider that. Um, and please do check out our, our sessions, um, next week, we've got Asia, we've got Wales and we've got, um, employability and, um, studying art and design in the UK. So a whole lot of different topics. Um, we will also have, um, affordability of studying abroad and our Ireland session, which was supposed to be tomorrow, but had to be rescheduled. So those are all still coming in addition to the recordings of everything that's already happened this month. So thank you again so much, um, Johnny and Peter. We really, really appreciate having you today. Um, and, um, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks very much. Thank you.